Hi there and welcome to this quantitative reasoning tutorial on geometry. Now this is actually the first of a two-part tutorial so make sure to catch out the second part when we advance a bit and go into three dimensions. But just now we're sticking to basics, we're sticking to things that are flat, two-dimensional is what this tutorial is on. So we're going to aim to cover a few things in this tutorial. We're first going to tackle area questions and almost as an adjunct to that we're going to do unit conversions because these two go hand in hand, peanut butter jelly, they are the exact same question. So most area questions come coupled with a unit conversion. So it makes sense that we're going to cover both of them in this one tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is go right back to basics and think about just what are some of, what are some of the common shapes that we're going to get asked. So a parallelogram, and remember that a parallelogram is a shape that's very specifically got two sets of parallel sides. So technically, a rectangle is also a parallelogram because it's two sets of parallel sides. So to calculate the area of a parallelogram, we've got our base and our height. Our base is just along one of the lengths. Our height is the tallest point. And we're just going to do area equals base times height. Now, if you're anything like me and was wondering, well, how on earth can that work? Because we've got this jotty offy bit. It's helpful to think of just if we take this jutty outy bit and just like, you know, throw that over here. It's a beautiful rectangle. And so it actually does, it does work and it's specifically for parallelograms that we can do this formula. So let's think of uh, um, a square now. So a square, of course, is another type of parallelogram, but a regular um, shape at that. So square, if we just call one of the sides is A, Hopefully you'll all know that uh, area is just going to be one of the sides squared. So in this case, let's call it a squared. So looking at a circle, um, we all know the age old formula, pi r squared. So area equals pi r squared for circle. Now in terms of using pi in the UCAT, you, you only have to use the basics. You can, you can only use 3.14. There's no pi button on the calculator. Just memorize 3.14. Now, if you are one of the people that have 20 digits of pi memorized, don't you dare put me to shame, just use 3.14. There's no point in popping in 3.14159. Okay, slight flex, but just use 3.14 in quantitative reasoning. So in terms of what we do for a triangle, so triangle is going to have an area of base times height, but we have to actually half this. So we can look at this similarly to how we would do a rectangle, but this time, if we pop the two halves of the triangle together, it makes a rectangle that's half the size of the base. So that's why we have to have the formula for triangle, half base times height. Base being from you know the, the stretch of one of the sides and then height being normally from the middle of that side up to the tallest vertex. But really it's just the, the total extreme of that triangle. Awesome, so we've recapped the basic formulas. There's a few others that we would just expect you to know, um, like a rectangle. But these are all the main ones that you need to recap. Brilliant, so if you want to jump in and just have a go straight away, pause the video now and give this one a go. Um, if you want to just stick around and watch me attempt, then absolutely, we're going to go through the answer in just a moment. So with this one, the first thing I realised, well, well, the first thing I realised is it's a triangle and I know the formula for that, so slight relief. Next thing that I realise, is I've got different units going on here. So I've got both the unit conversion, which kind of tells me that there's gonna be something going on. Then I've also got the units for the sides being in feet, and then the units for the question answers being in square meters. So before I go anywhere, I'm wanting to just convert those in order to make it easier for myself. So all I'm gonna do is think about what this area conversion down the bottom here, what that means. So I'm wanting to get from feet two meters. Now I, I know I can get from centimeters to meters, that's that's fine, we can do that. So I'm mainly wanting to get from feet to centimeters. So I'm going to have to convert those one foot into 12 inches and then every, each one of those inches into 2.5 centimeters. So overall for our sides what I'm actually going to be doing is timesing by 12 and then timesing by 2.5. That's what I'm going to do to so those sides in total. So actually that's going to be the equivalent of timesing by 30. Because two 12s is 24 and half of a 12 is six. 24 plus six, 30. Grant, so all I'm gonna do is apply that to my two sides going on. 
So that's going to give me 2,700 centimetres for this side and 1,500 centimetres for this side. Lovely. Now, convert those to metres, nice and easy, bung off those zeros. So we're going to be left with the area is going to be equal to half times base, which we're going to say is 27 metres, times our height, which is 15 metres. So half times 27 times 15, I could estimate this in my head to be half of 27. It's going to be roughly like half of 30. So I'm going to get to maybe like 15 times 15 as an estimate, which is going to be 225 um, metres squared. I can estimate because all the answer options are spread out. So this is going to leave me nice and simply with answer option A here, as that's the only one that's anywhere close to the value we just worked out. So very well done if you got that one and handled that unit conversion as well. Now, it goes without saying that for the majority, the UCAT consortium like to trip us up and then stamp on us when we're on the ground. However, for unit conversions, we can spot and get over these. We, we don't have to fall on unit conversions. So make sure you're aware of these because they can be hellish. So make sure that you have an idea of how to do unit conversions and you're always keeping an eye out for units in questions, especially area questions it lends itself to that funny US, US imperial system quite nicely. So we're going to talk a bit more about some of the traps that comes up with, with unit conversions. So if we imagine this square, 10 centimetres times 10 centimetres and one is area in metres squared. So we, we could just do, you know, 10 times 10 and then get 100. And then we know that 100 centimetres squared equals one metre squared, right? So we're just going to say this, this square is going to be one metre squared. Ah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not, is it? The reason that we've tripped up there is because our unit conversion for a square is going to be different. So the way that we actually have to do this, we know that one metre equals 100 centimetre. But if we're squaring the metre side, so we're saying one metre squared, we're squaring that one, that says is one metre squared. The other side, we're squaring that centimetre to make it centimetre squared. We also got to square that 100, which means that one meter squared is actually going to equal 10,000 centimeters squared. So always just follow the logic. If you're squaring one side of thing, you have to square the entire other side of things, including that number. So if we were to convert from, you know, uh, uh, inches equals meters, and we wanted meters squared, we would just have to not only do inches squared, but we have to square the number that comes in front of inches. So always bear in mind the, the sort of the full proof of how we do this. So we can convert at end as long as we realise that converting between squared um, units is going to be different than just converting between the sort of the simple linear units. As we did in the last equation, it's, it is probably easier for us to convert it first. So we converted, you know, early on in the last question that we did. It would be useful for us to do that here. So we know that 10 centimetres, we can easily plop down to 0 0.1 metres. 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 is going to get us to that 0 0.01 metres squared. But the same as if we times that up by 10,000, we would get to the value of centimetres squared. However, it's just easier to convert at the start, in my opinion at least, and you know, make sure that you're getting the correct answer and not tripping up. Lovely, so here's another question for you to have a go off. So pause the video now, give it a go, and then come back and we'll go through the answer together. So first thing I pick up, I've not got the right units. Surprise. So I've got 16.5 times 9.9 .9 feet and I want it in meters because my price is per meter squared. So instead of you know doing a conversion at the end, I'm gonna do the conversion at the beginning. 3.3 feet equals one meters. Well, thankfully, that's very nice maths actually. 16.5 divided by 3.3 is going to be 5. 9.9 .9 divided by 3.3 is going to be 3. So that means that the area of my, um, where am I decorating? My bedroom is going to be 15 metres squared. So I've got that 15 metres squared. I just have to look for what data I actually need in the table now, which is the material cost of buying carpet. Only the material cost, 
we're not paying anyone to install it we're apparently going to diy this the carpet's going to end up on the ceiling if i do that but let's just still try and <laughs> just pay for the materials so we're going to look here and got 25. so we're going to do 25 times 15. now we don't want to get our calculator out for a sum like this because we can do that in our heads so split it up let's do 25 times 10. it's going to be 250 and then 25 times 5 um, it's going to be 125. Um, so that's not a plus there, that's meant to be plus. And then that gives us a total of 375. Let's get used to doing these sort of mental maths in your head. When you're times in by 15, times by 10, times by 5, add it together. Um, so that's going to give us 375, which is answer option C. So we're going to stick with the same data. And I want you to have another go of this one and then we'll talk through how you got to your answer just after. So with this one, we've got multiple ways that we go about it. Now, if you did do the sort of the, the price of the material times the, the area plus the price of the labor times the area minus the price of the carpet times the area and all that jazz, I'm sorry, but you took the slow method. Um, and unfortunately in the UK, we can't be a turtle. We, we gotta be a hare. So let's try and think about what that method was doing and condense it. So if we did something like this, we would be doing many, many, many different sums. There's actually seven different steps in that one. If we just first add together, you know, the, the price of the carpet overall to be 25 and 10, give us that as 35, 35 pounds per meter squared, and then times it by the area, we're getting better. We're still only on medium step though. So that's three steps overall. If we do 25 times, 25 plus 10 times by 15 equals five to five and then take away that at the end. We're still on the slow method. What we'd actually like to do is realize in our heads, all we have to do is work out the difference in the cost of wood and the cost of carpet overall. So just do that 55 minus 35, which gives us our 20 and do that 20 times 15 to give us that 300. So we're doing it all in one step. Only one multiplication there, and it's multiplication we can actually do in our heads. So if you properly think about how we can approach questions, you'll often find yourself getting the answer far, far quicker. So it's important to catch the shortcuts like this. Don't be a turtle. Now that UCAT calculator is the thing that haunts my nightmares. It is the worst designed calculator and it's meant to put you off from using it because a lot of this maths we should be able to do in our heads. It is our instinct and it was my instinct whenever I did maths exams to just double check that like two times two hasn't changed in the past little while. What if it has? I double check the most simple maths on a calculator. We don't have time for that in the UCAT. Whenever you can, you gotta avoid using that calculator. Get into the habit of doing mental maths, improve your mental maths, practice on it, and then you can find yourself approaching quantitative reasoning so much faster. So sometimes, like in that previous question, it can actually be much, much easier to set up some sort of algebraic equation. And this is where your whiteboard will come in really handy. If you set up some sort of equation on your whiteboard and you can do all the working and actually put all that algebra that you learn in maths to good use. So one last question to do, and this is definitely a tricky one. So I want you to really focus on how you would go about this one and then we'll talk through one of the golden methods for this one. So let's think about what we've actually going on here. We, we have got a number and we, we could use that, you know, we could split it down into finding two different dimensions of what's going on um, for the yellow mat, but that, that, would, that would need a lot of maths. Um, math that I don't really have time for just now. So I'm gonna try and use algebra. Now, don't run away yet. I promise the algebra is not gonna be that tricky. So let's call the yellow mat our, our base. So our yellow mat is going to be um, our, you know, let's just call it x squared. So we're just gonna say each side is x. Our red mat is gonna have slightly different dimensions, but they're still in respect to x. So let's draw in that red mat. 
and we're actually going to use red this time. So one side is 2 meters greater, so that's x plus 2. One side is 2 meters less, so that's x minus 2. Awesome. We need both the perimeter and the area. So let's shoot our shot on that. So for the yellow mat, we're going to say that the perimeter is just going to be 4x, and hopefully that's fairly easy to see. So for yellow mat, perimeter equals 4x. For our red mat, it's going to equal 2 times that x plus 2. So that's going to be 2x plus 4. And 2 times that x minus 2. So that's 2x minus 4. Awesome. Cancel out those 4s, add those 2x's together. 4x. Brilliant. Our perimeter is the same. So let's get rid of some of these options. So we're going to boop and oh, okay, we're only going to get rid of one, but that's fine. That's fine. We can still, we can still cope. So we're now got to work out the area. So the area for the yellow mat is just going to be x squared, as you can hopefully see. Now let's work out the area for the red mat. And this is the most complex algebra you're going to do. So that's going to be x plus 2 um, times x minus 2. Let's just multiply those out. So x squared and then this is just going to be a sort of difference here. So we've got plus 2x minus 2x. So that's just going to cancel out. Um, so it's a difference of squares. So we've got minus 4 squared. Um, or sorry, minus 4 because 2 is 4 squared. Awesome. So hopefully comparing those, you can see that the area of the red one is actually going to be smaller by 4. So that means that we're looking for a one where yellow area is greater than red. So the only one that says that is option D. So we're going to pick that one and we've solved it without actually doing any numerical maths. Only algebra instead. But you can see it, hopefully it wasn't too complex a method to use and you've hopefully followed along with the working there. So remember, algebra is used for problem solving. It's used when we want to just see theoretically how is something going to play out. And a lot of quantitative reasoning questions can actually benefit from that algebra. Decision making, you'll also use algebra on some of the sort of the spatial equations. So it is useful to prove your math teacher wrong and show that there is a real life use for algebra and that's getting into med school. So always use algebra if you can. Practice questions where you may have to bring it in and really understand what you're doing and it'll really help you get to the answer to the question much faster. So let's quickly mention simplifying conversions. So there's something we've got going on here, some sort of conversion. We need to get meters into feet, and if I'm honest, there's, there's no easy way for us to do this off the bat. So the, the difference with this equation that we've got set up, so we've got 6.1 meters, equals 20 feet. Now that's not as nice as we normally have. If one of the sides was 1, it would make it a lot quicker. So let's just do that. Let's divide both sides by 6.1. So that's going to give us 1 meters. And if we pop it into our calculator, we'd end up getting 3.3 .3 feet, which you'll remember from the last question. And that's going to make it much simpler for us. So then in order to do 19.2 meters in feet, we just do 19.2 times that 3.3 .3 equals 63.4 feet. And again, I would have done that in my head, don't worry. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> I would have done that on a calculator, don't worry. Um, so always try and get your, your unit conversion into a format that you can understand. So hopefully in this lesson, you've covered calculating basic areas, converting units, and maybe seeing that algebra is not as scary as we think, and it can actually come in useful. So in order to consolidate everything in this lesson and before your next one, definitely learn the area formulas off by heart and just practice using mental maths and looking for any shortcuts you can, especially using algebra and unit conversions. Well done on completing another lesson and I'll see you again for another one soon.